Hi, you guys. My name is Jessica Downs. I am the early childhood pastor at Cedar Park, and today I'm here to talk to you about prayer and praying with kids. When my husband was about four years old, his little brother was about two, and he came down with a really bad fever. And his parents said, Lauren, would you come pray for Josh? And so he comes over, and in his you know innocence, he says, Dear God, bless the food. Prayer is such an important part of the Christian life, but how do we explain, how do we teach prayer to kids in a way that they understand it? Today, I'd like to share three steps in creating a culture of prayer in your ministry. As I share, think about things that you do in your ministry, things that you can improve on, and if there's anything in this talk that you want to put into practice in your own church. So the first step in creating this culture is to model prayer model it. What does your prayer life look like? As I was preparing for this talk, I came across this quote that says, kids aren't going to learn heartfelt prayers until we pray heartfelt prayers in front of them. Now, heartfelt prayers doesn't mean fancy or eloquent. Uh, We can't just go on in front of the kids and say, oh, dearest heavenly father, creator of the universe, universe, how magnificent and powerful is your name. Now, that's not a bad way to pray, but when we're praying in front of kids, it's important that, at least I believe, it's important to pray in a way that they understand it. Pray in in words that they would pray because they need to understand that they don't have to have a fancy prayer to come to God. All they have to do is pray like they're talking to their friend because they are. That's what God is. Another point is to not dismiss a real prayer request. Now, uh, it may be the 12th time that Johnny has said, would you pray for my guinea pig's eye? It's infected. Sure, Johnny. Because we need to show kids that nothing is too big, nothing is too small for God to care about. And that's true. So we should model that in our own ministries of, yeah, let's pray about that. Another important part of modeling prayer is to pray for kids right then and there. When they have a need, bending down, getting on eye level and saying, I would love to pray with you and doing it. Because here's the thing, in our lives as adults, a lot of times it's really easy to say, oh yeah, I'll definitely be praying about that. And then we go off and forget about it. Or maybe we do pray, but I have to tell you that there is prayer when we come together. It says that in the Bible, when two or more are gathered, he is there with you. So To me, it's super important to to show these kids that you care enough to take the time to pray with them. Plus, it teaches them that they can do the same thing. So I want to encourage you today. I want to challenge you. What are some ways that you model prayer in your ministry? What are some ways that you can improve? The second point in creating this culture of prayer is to teach it. So the first one was to model. The second one is to teach. Maybe it looks like a month of lessons on prayer. Or maybe it just looks like tidbits here and there giving little insights into what prayer is. And though modeling it is a vital part in creating this culture, we can't expect that kids are going to see what we do at church and then do it at home. Seeing and doing are two totally different things. So it's important to teach kids that in its simplest form, Prayer is simply talking to God and letting him talk to you. Remind kids, we talked about this during the first point, but remind kids that they don't have to use fancy words. It doesn't have to be eloquent. We can pray short little prayers. They could be long. It doesn't matter because God hears them. One of the things that I uh, tell the kids is that God can hear you any way, anywhere, at any time. Whether you're in the car, whether you're laying in your bed, whether you're at school right before your test, God can hear you. Uh, Another thing to talk about is the posture of prayer. You don't have to pray with your eyes closed and your heads bowed. We do that at church because it helps us focus, right? But it doesn't matter what posture we're in. Now, there are, there are important points in posture, right, of, of closing out the external things and focusing on the Lord. So maybe that looks like kneeling at the front so that they're not distracted by the people in front of them. Or maybe that looks like, for me, walking around and praying is one of the ways that I pray. Uh, maybe it looks like writing dear God letters and writing it down. I mean, you think about David, that's, that's what he did. The Psalms is all about that. Writing down your prayers. Maybe it looks like worshiping, sitting in your seat or standing up, raising your hands. All of those ways are, all of those things are ways that we can pray. Another thing you can do is to talk about stories in the Bible of people who pray. So we talked about David, right, and how he prayed, writing his prayers to God. As Solomon's prayer for wisdom 
Moses interceding on behalf of the Israelites. Daniel in the face of adversity, in the face of death, still being true and and praying to God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego praying in the fiery furnace and believing that God was going to deliver them. But even if he didn't, that he would still, they would still praise him. Hannah asking God for a child. Paul praying for the churches and for those who had yet to know God. And hello, Jesus prayed all throughout his life, all throughout his ministry. Some of the most poignant prayers, the day of his, um, of his death, the, the night before his death. Prayer is an important thing. It's all over the Bible. Jesus did it. We should do it. There are a lot of different ways to pray. And you can teach your kids all of these. You can teach them one of them, whatever works best for your ministry. But one of them was taught by Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 6. And it's called the Lord's Prayer. I'm sure you're familiar with it. And if we break it down and make it a little bit more understandable for these kids, because hallowed isn't really a word that we use very often. Trespass, probably not a word that we use very often. But if we break it down and say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We can praise God as our Father and recognize that he is holy and he is perfect. The next line, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Recognizing that his way is the best way and aligning yourself to what he wants for you. Give us this day our daily bread, asking for provision, asking for your daily needs. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Asking him to cleanse you from your sins as the very important part, forgiving those and letting go of grudges, letting go of anger. The next part, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Asking God for strength to stand up against what the devil may try to throw your way. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Acknowledging and declaring his power above all else can do all of these things that you've asked and more. Another simple acronym for kids to remember is PRAY. P-R-A-Y. The first one being praise, thanking God for his goodness. Maybe it's in general, maybe it's specific things in their lives, for a roof over their head, for food to eat, for friends. The second one is repenting, confessing your sins and asking him to forgive you. The third one for the A is another's needs. We call this intercession. Bringing requests to God on behalf of someone else. So this would be praying for Aunt Sue or uh, asking God to heal Joey's big toe that got stubbed or that that is praying for another's needs. And then the why here is your needs. Bringing your problems, your challenges before the Lord and asking for strength, asking for courage to tell people about Jesus, asking for healing from your cold or whatever it may be. So again, pray, praise, repent, another's needs and your needs. That's an easy way to to help kids remember. And then it's also important in teaching prayer to deal with and acknowledge that sometimes prayers are unanswered or, or seemingly unanswered. And how do we handle that? Because let's be honest, as adults, we don't fully understand that, right? God, why did you let this happen? God, we, I've prayed for this for a decade and why isn't it coming yet? So it's important to talk about. And even if we don't have the answers, which we don't, we can walk through that with these kids because they're going to have the same questions we do. So sometimes there's a reason why a yes is not the best solution. Like, I want all the candy in the world. Well, you'd probably get a stomach ache. Or I really want to be friends with that really popular kid. That might take you down a path that, that God doesn't want you to go. But sometimes it's not that clear Sometimes it's not that cut and dry. What happens when their grandma's cancer doesn't get healed? What happens when their best friend moves away, even though they asked that God would help them stay? There's a lot of things that seem to be unanswered, even in our own lives. And I think that's okay to share. It's okay to be vulnerable and let them know that you've had those questions. But in the end, we know God. We might not know why he's doing something or not doing something, but we can, we can know that he is the same. He doesn't change. And his word says that he can turn everything for good. And so in those moments with those questions, bend down, talk to that kid, hug them, cry with them, let them know that you care. And then just remind them of God's faithfulness because in the end, That's our hope. That's what we fall back on, right? Things might not go perfectly. Things might not go according to plan. In fact, they rarely do. 
but God's got it in his hands. He's got it under control. God doesn't always take our problems away, but he promises to walk through them with us. So when was the last time you taught on prayer? Is it time to do it again? And what are some of your favorite ways to teach prayer? Maybe it's one of these. Maybe you have something totally different. But I'd encourage you to think about that. Consider, is it time to make that a focus again in your ministry? And the last step in creating this culture is to practice it. So again, number one, model it. Number two, teach it. Number three, practice it. Once kids have learned that prayer is not as scary as they thought it was, we have to give them opportunities to put it into practice. So bring kids up on stage to pray for the offering or to pray for our missionaries or have them pray over the snack. Teach them that we want you, we want to hear you pray. God wants to hear you pray. During small groups, allowing kids to pray for their neighbor's needs. Praying out loud can be a big hurdle to overcome. I, even as adults, right? We get nervous praying in front of other people or praying for people out loud. And it's important to realize that every kid is a little bit different. Some are going to do it right away, some aren't. So giving them the space to pass if they want to, but always giving them the opportunity, always encouraging them to do so. It, always, it probably goes without saying, but make sure the kids listening are being respectful. And if there's a stutter or if there's a mess up of words, making sure that they, uh, they don't laugh and just creating a culture of, of it's okay. Like, I mess up praying. I, I mess up speaking. It's okay. God, God knows your heart. He knows what you're saying. Another important thing is to have a response time after the lesson. Regardless of what you're teaching on, giving kids the space and the time to talk to God and let, them, let God talk to them. It may look different each week. In fact, I encourage you to, to switch it up a little bit. But give different ways to respond. Let them respond verbally or written or through worship. And then have your team available to pray with them. Every once in a while, give kids the opportunity and give them the chance to even share what God has put on their hearts. You'd be surprised. Sometimes it's like not really relative to what you're talking about, but a lot of times you'll be blown away by what God has put on their hearts. One time in the curriculum we were using, uh, it suggested that at the end, the response time would be that kids would huddle in groups and pray for each other. And my mind immediately went to, well, that's a great idea, but I've got 100 kids in here. We're just going to get distracted. They're going to be a distraction. But we gave it a shot. And I want to tell you that it was an incredible experience. Now, there were kids that weren't doing it, you know, the back row of boys <clears throat> that were just, uh, you know, trying to be distracting. But for those kids who did participate, it was a really cool experience. So where have you given kids an opportunity to pray? What would be the good, a good next step in your ministry? When it comes down to it, our kids' lives will be enriched as they pray, and so will our ministry. Kids may not have a home where prayer is exhibited on a daily basis. Maybe their mom and dad don't even pray during meals. Maybe they don't pray when they drop them off for school. So it's important to create that culture in church where kids see it, recognize it, learn about it, and do it. Because if it doesn't happen at home, where else is it going to happen? As I close, I want to share a story with you. One Saturday evening during our service, a sixth grader came up to me and uh, at the end of the lesson when we were doing that response time, and he came up and he said, Pastor Jessica, could you pray for me? I said, yeah, I'd love to pray for you, bud. And he said that uh, he was really struggling. His father had abandoned them and they were living in a shelter. His grandpa, who he was really close to, had just passed away. Get this, his best friend was murdered by his father. And he said, I just struggle with depression. And I might look like a happy kid on the outside and I'm smiling, but when I go home, I just, I just want to die. And man, holy cow. I was like, I was heartbroken and I didn't know what to say. And I told him that. And I said, I'm so sorry this happened to you. And I prayed with him and I had an opportunity to speak life into him and to speak those truths that are in the scripture over him. Here's the thing, I don't think he would have come up and shared that if we hadn't given an opportunity to do so. 
So I want to encourage you in your ministry, what opportunities are maybe you missing out on? Or what, am I, what opportunities am I missing out on if we don't give that space for the kids? Prayer is important. Prayer changes things. And if we truly believe that, it should be reflected in our ministry.